We welcome you to the south end zone of Kyle Field. It is Studio 12, that's where we are, and this is the April edition of the Aggie Town Hall with our Director of Athletics, Ross Bjork. I, as always, I am Will Johnson with Andrew Monaco and Ross here with us as well. We've been getting a, a, a robust line of questioning from the 12th man yeah, here in recent good. town halls. Uh, we've got a few more today, but uh, one way to get started here, though, we, we had a couple of topics that, that we just wanted to hit on before we got to the Q&A that came from the 12th man. Uh, a couple of things ongoing this week here at Texas A&M, and uh, one of them, Ross, was last night, Monday night, Hall of Champions, yeah. the annual BCAs. And I go back to uh, a couple of years ago, we held this virtually. You were the host. Right, right. We did about an hour and a half Zoom call with you, to, to, and you, you had wardrobe yeah. changes and everything, but uh, – I would imagine this week's VCA was a little more comfortable setting for yeah, everybody yeah. involved. What's, what's crazy is, so I've been here almost three years. It'll be three years in July, and this was my first in-person VCA mm -hmm. award show because we didn't obviously didn't have it in 2020. We did it virtually that year, and then we did it virtually last year mm -hmm. as well. So this is the first time that a lot of our student athletes, mm -hmm. a lot of our staff have seen it in person and. So it's just a neat event. I mean, it's it's it really is a reminder of why we do what we do, to see the young men and women all dressed up in their, you know, kind of Sunday best, if if you will. You know, they're loving that part. We got photo booths going on. We got we're popping confetti. They're being celebrated for for what they do academically and athletically. And then uh, also there's some there's some good stories and good sort of reminders about leadership and so I just think it's a great you know culmination of uh, again sort of why we do what we do we say everything's about the student athlete they're the beginning and the end for us and uh, I walk out of there just energized that we get to work with all these young people <laughs> like <laughs> we get a we get to help them like achieve their dreams yeah. and like this is what we get to do every day it's really really neat to to see and just some amazing accomplishments yeah amazing accomplishments that, uh, that isn't it fun when they so. all get together too not just uh, we yeah, get to watch the, that yeah. but they get to interact with one another mm -hmm. and i because i always think yeah, athletes appreciate sports, other right. athletes that's right yeah yeah and uh, one of the cool things that 12th man productions put together was um something uh what was it uh swapping sports <laughs> you know so can you be an aggie student athlete so we had equestrian athletes trying to be football players and we had track athletes trying to put on a swimming you know cap and uh the you know the speedo uh, <laughs> didn't quite fit a, a, a thrower's body in uh, in track and field um, so there were some cool you yeah. know sort of clips and highlights um bloopers if you will along the way so yeah fun night for sure now, i think they all like the uh the maroon carpet portion of the evening too the the entrance right. it's, it's like it's like oscar yeah. night mm -hmm. you know yeah, picture taking <laughs> just yeah. a lot of fun yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, so the BCAs, the Building Champions Awards, were held uh, this week. Uh, you can check out uh, how they went at 12thman.com. Obviously, our social media channels recapped it quite well also. And speaking of achievement, uh, there's one team we wanted to recognize here. I mean, like you mentioned, all across athletics, there's some fantastic student athletes, fantastic coaches, great teams. But uh, there's one team that just accomplished something that is borderline historic here, uh, the women's tennis team. They will start playing in the SEC tournament here later on this week. They have already clinched the SEC regular season crown. And these Aggie women, they went 27-1 and overall and just swept right through the SEC's a 13-0 and conference record. And, again, completing the SEC regular season championship this past weekend. Yeah. I don't care what sport it is. If you go undefeated in the SEC and <laughs> SEC play 13-0, and that's an amazing accomplishment. And I don't know how many I, – I, I'd be curious to see what all-time sports across the whole SEC, how many undefeated. Mm -hmm. There's probably not that many mm -hmm. when you think about mm -hmm. it. And so to have that accomplishment – and actually, if you go back and look at the box score of the one loss that we have, there was actually – I'll be nice. Um, it was a controversial mm -hmm. call Yeah. that if that call goes our way, we're 28 no. Mm. Be, it was that close mm -hmm. of a match against mm -hmm. Cal that we lost uh, earlier in the year. But, hey, it's it's added fuel, I think, to, to these <laughs> young ladies. Uh, I saw them last night at the at the award show, and I just was like, congratulations, this is amazing. And, you know, they're just so humble and thankful. And But you could kind of see it in their eye like, hey, we're not finished. Right. 
like we we want this long you know postseason run that that starts uh, on friday in mm-hmm. the sec tournament in uh, in gainesville obviously we're the we're the one seed we'll see who we play and uh, the men also uh, tip off this week um, in the sec tournament on the men's tennis side women's golf had sec tournament last week men's golf yeah. has sec tournament so it's kind of sec spring sports mm-hmm. championship season right now but mm-hmm. Tremendous shout out to our women's mm. Aggie uh, tennis team, just for what they've done, how they represent our program. Coach Weaver's done a phenomenal job, um, and he actually talking to him last fall. He was like, "We might be pretty good." Like I, you know, <laughs> y- and, and usually coaches don't, right? They try to keep, mm-hmm. yeah. they try to temper expectations. But he was like, "We got some experience. We have some newcomers. We've got some international that have really great experience." So I don't think he predicted thirteen and zero or twenty seven and one, but he <laughs> yeah. was like, "Hey, we might be pretty good this yeah. year." Mm-hmm. And um, so now you just want to you want to finish strong, absolutely. In yeah. the SEC and the NCAA. So good luck, ladies. Yeah, and, a fan, and a fantastic way to start our absolutely. town hall, the BCAs earlier this week, and women's tennis wrapped up the SEC regular season title this past weekend. And like Ross said, they men's tennis, men's golf, all competing for SEC championships later. This week, So that gets us started. Now we will begin with our line of questioning from you, the 12th man. Again, if you ever have a question for Ross on a future town hall, uh, submit at 12thman.com slash askross. You can do so at the official website of Texas A&M Athletics. And uh, remind me before we close today, guys, we do have our next town hall scheduled. We're, we're ready to go with the next town hall in May, oh, we and do. we'll, we'll yeah. get that out. Oh. So. Uh, you're going to want to yeah. write this down if you didn't know it already. Yeah, no, Andrew, no so. you took me by surprise. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of today's session, we'll tell you when the May Town Hall is. But the line of questioning from the 12th man from this April session begins with Susie, class of 78, and she's from Midland, Texas. We're going to start with a couple of ticketing questions okay. today, here Ross. And uh, Susie heard you on one of the recent talks here from Studio 12 that you asked donors to make an effort to pass on game tickets that will not otherwise be used. Uh, That was our last town hall. You were talking about baseball in particular. You got a specific question about that. Uh, But she says it could apply to any sport. Uh, Susan has tickets to football and basketball, and they never have trouble using those football tickets, but they live out of town and often have basketball tickets that they can't use. She is happy to give them to any Aggie who would use them, but there's not, as she says, a good system to do so. I generally post on Twitter, occasionally have a taker that way, but if there were a centralized system, maybe like a stub hub or something like that, it would be easier and more efficient. And she says, hopefully we can put more butts in seats. Uh, any chance, yeah. she, she calls on your tech folks, uh, any <laughs> chance your tech folks could get, <laughs> get on to that. We'll get our, uh, our IT folks are right, yeah. right across yeah. the hallway. We'll, we'll get them on it. You know, Susie, uh, I, I really appreciate the question, and, and thanks for trying because uh, obviously that means a lot that, that people are taking the effort. Honestly, the, the best thing to do, because you can forward your tickets to somebody, and that person on the other end does not have to buy them from you. you there is a ticket forward system within our ticketing system, and we can't really create our own systems because we have partners. Packy Olin is our ticketing partner and so we can't really go in and create our own platform if you will we would have to work through them but I believe that there is actually an easy system and it's all about just forwarding those to somebody who will use them and if you're using Twitter or Facebook then really all you need is that person's email address and you forward them onto that person and they can go to the game so Mm -hmm. um, there I, I, I don't know what I don't know is she says for free I don't know if there's a transaction fee. I, I don't know the detail on that. Maybe there is, but I do know that the person on the receiving end does not have to buy them when you do forward them on. So um, if there's anything we can keep tweaking, we'll, we'll look at it. But I believe we actually have we have a good system mm-hmm. in place through our, our friends at, uh, at Packy Olin. And, and I will tell you that Packy Olin actually, they do come to us, the 12th Man Foundation, our ticket staff, and they ask us, Hey, what can we do to get better? We are viewed in their mind as one of the leaders in college athletics around all these platforms. Mm -hmm. So if there's something cutting edge, then typically our folks are involved in it, uh, working along with Packy Olin. So it's a, it's a great relationship. All right. Thank you, Susie, for that Mm -hmm. question from Midland, Texas class of 78, continuing 
along the lines of ticketing. Uh, there were two students who sent this question in, so we'll combine them both. Uh, one of them is Nolan Moore, class of 22. He's from Orange, Texas, over there in southeast Texas. And then the other labels himself or herself a student who is questioning buying a sports pass and says they are class of 21 from right here in College Station. Uh, they combined to essentially ask this, Ross, uh, why is there not a fall-only sports pass available for students graduating in December who wouldn't utilize a sports pass for both fall and spring sports? That's a great question. Um, and, and, look, we, we look at pricing of our all sports passes. We look at supply and demand on an annual basis. And, and I will tell you right now, there's a huge demand. Um, we, we do have a limited supply of how many sports passes we can sell, and it all ties back to Kyle Field, right? Those two decks mm -hmm. and then the end zones. We can put students in the end zones. But having essentially goal line to goal line seating for our students, a lot of students can sit between uh, the 20s. So we have great sight lines, mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. and third deck. There is a limit, but it's, it's really all anchored on the football component of the all sports pass and right now we're, we're maxing out at that number um, and so we we haven't looked at breaking them up do you have a fall only mm -hmm. do you have a spring sports only we have not looked at breaking them up because right now we're reaching that cap um, so again constantly evaluate constantly look at it we always do that but but right now there just hasn't been a huge demand for somebody only buying a, a fall or a spring, because uh, you'd have to look at it both ways. You'd have to say, here's a fall and here's a spring, and right now there's just not that. Like how would you break up basketball demand. in a way? That's a winter, right? It's, it, mm -hmm. it goes right at – you start in November yeah. mm -hmm. and go all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, March. Right. So is that a fall yeah. sport or a or spring sport? Is it a third option now, a third right? option, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, again, kind of to your point, keeping it simple, mm -hmm. one price, and, uh, again, kind of the anchor, really the anchor is – is the football piece of mm -hmm. all this. So, But, no, good good point, good question, and uh, something that we, we take seriously when we get feedback like this and, and questions like this. And, uh, and Nolan's got another one for you. Nolan, he, uh, Nolan, uh, <laughs> he must be a sport management major. Or He's something. getting extra He's, credit uh, for this, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I interviewed the AD. I asked him a yeah, few questions. That's, really, yeah. that's good. Nolan, I like that. Very good. Not Very realizing good Nolan could knock on your door and ask you. I know, he could. <laughs> he could tweet at me or something right. like that. No, that's it's right. All, it's all good. No, Nolan, we're giving you a hard time. <laughs> but we're glad that's for because the we two love submittals. You. That's yeah. because we love you. When, yeah. they don't, when they don't make fun of you, that's when that's you right. know you're that's right. that's right. So gig them to you, Nolan. <laughs> and, and here is your second question. And it's not the second uh, question you've gotten on facilities during these town halls, I think. <laughs> Every Seems month. Like every month. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. It's always yeah, yeah. a hot topic. Yeah. Facilities are a big deal. And every town yeah. hall, you have gotten questions about facilities. And, by the way, when it comes to facilities, the 12th man out there is going to have some news upcoming soon. Uh, th there will be some news yeah. in regards to our facilities coming very soon. But I'll hit you with Nolan's second question. Again, class of 22 from Orange, Texas. Uh, he asks, are there plans to renovate Bluebell Park within five years? Yes. Very simple answer on that with a lot of complicated steps um, to, to get to the finish line. But, yes, that, that is the goal is hopefully sooner than five years. We, we want to accelerate it as, as much as we can. But to answer a specific question, yes, mm -hmm. for sure within, within five years. And so really uh, to your point about this weekend, uh, we, we will have more specific specific information, excuse me, about our capital campaign, about our facility timeline, about w really kind of what's coming next. There's been some outputs out there. We've had to get uh, region approval at, at a couple, couple different steps here. There'll be another region approval in May about next steps about our projects. But this weekend, we will release a lot of public information about what the facilities look like, what's the timeline, some costing information, some finance information, those things will be released uh, this weekend through different settings. There'll be a little press uh, interaction. There'll be some Q&A with, with myself and uh, Travis Dabney with some of our key donors. So there'll be a lot of news that'll come out of this weekend, and, and people will have more visibility on, uh, on what's coming next, next. And really, people won't see anything about Bluebell Park at, at this point in time when we talk about our facilities this weekend. 
but the next phase of what we want to do includes Bluebell Park. Mm. It also includes what happens around soccer, you know, Ellis Field. Mm-hmm. So th- those are some co- components that are coming next. And so uh, stay tuned on Bluebell. We know that there's priorities, there's needs, there's player development areas, there's fan amenities based on our crowds. I think you were saying – we don't really have any tickets left, right? Arkansas this weekend, this weekend <laughs> Friday Arkansas, and Saturday. I mean, Look, I had a hard time getting tickets, so you're going to want to get on it yeah. quick. <laughs> and, you, and you have connections. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we know mm. that there's going to be a demand for more seating, a bigger capacity at Bluebell. So all of those things are on the table that uh, we just have to figure out uh, time and money. That's what we said before. Facilities are about time and money, and uh, that's what we've got to get to the bottom of. So lots of work happening uh behind the scenes in our in our discussions Mm -hmm. and if i could just quickly on the side here texas a&m baseball you got back from georgia which a&m pulled off a great series Mm -hmm. win over a nationally ranked bulldog team and i don't know i I think i put the label on this team right now is fun to watch this group of aggies with with coach sloss nagel in his first year I mean, you were there. They ran out of Pringles. Yeah, on well, Saturday. I watched. I watched Good it. problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Problem to have. Yeah, but we just we just play hard. Yeah, I mean, we just mm-hmm. we're a gritty, tough, tough minded team. We we play hard. And hey, look, if you would have said that we'd be eight and seven at the halfway mark in the SEC, kind of based on unknown roster. Yeah, yeah. People Injuries. coming back. Yeah, mm-hmm. lose the left tran- side of your infield. Some transfers. Yeah. What's our pitching going to look like? I think we would have signed up for that mm-hmm. being eight and seven now we want to win on, and then you look at man we could have won yeah maybe four or five other yeah. <laughs> of those games right <laughs> um and so I, I just hey look let's just keep playing hard right let's see what happens at the end of the year arkansas is a top what five or six team in the country mm-hmm. uh, we've got a tough slate coming up yeah. but the way we're playing hard who, who knows yeah so i agree it'll be fun it'll be a fun weekend great weather Schla- so Schla- said early early in the season you know what? I don't worry about competitive grit any longer. Yeah. I, yeah. That they've, they've showed that to yeah. me. Yeah. And that's yeah. – That's right. Once you have that. But you can yep. see the identity emerging yeah. of this team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to save uh, Sutton for last? We can go Sutton for last. And then go to the – I was a little worried we were one. taking too long to get to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I know. But we'll – We'll save It'll help Sutton's we'll, ego if we we'll say we're saving the best <laughs> for last. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll have a fun one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you got this almost – Feels like verbatim last month, this question uh, regarding yeah. the men's basketball team. Uh, and as everybody knows now, they just made that fantastic run to close their season at the NIT, made it to the championship round in Madison Square Garden. But also, <laughs> this question comes from Twitter, and it was submitted by Mr. Miyagi. And I, I'm, that is a play on Karate Kid and Mr. Yeah. Miyagi. And so, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, clever. I'm not that dumb when it comes <laughs> to <true>. cultural <laughs> events and things like that. But uh, we will go with Mr. Miyagi from Twitter here. And this question is, uh, again, in, in regards to the men's basketball team. What was your immediate reaction to the Aggies being left out of the NCAA tournament? What conversations did you have with and with, with who? who? Uh, can you share anything about those conversations? The immediate reaction, I think Andrew's got some, like, emoji yeah, things on the screen. Yeah, see that on the screen. bottom of the Facebook? See that one right there, that mad which one? one? Well, which one? Yeah. Do you like that one? I was one? thinking of the one. Oh, the one emoji? The steam coming oh, out of your yeah, nose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. snorting. Like the uh-huh. snorting one? Yeah. Any, like, red yeah. face that's, in there, too? That's probably sure. uh, yeah. Mr. Sure. Miyagi. That's probably the immediate reaction <laughs> was the the steam <laughs> snorting. <laughs> Coming out of your nose. But actually, I, I was with the team um, in the banquet room there in Tampa, and it, was, it wasn't it was fun. It just, mm-hmm. you know. And I I sensed it. I, I looked at Justin Moore when Michigan made it mm-hmm. and when Indiana made it. I said, we're not in. You, you, you said it we're, before we're, everyone. Yeah. I remember I said, that. We're not, yep. we're not getting in. We're not getting in. Yeah. And it just kept, you know, chipping away at the, the last selections and – so it was it was honestly just it was sad. I mean, of course we were upset, but it, you just felt for the guys. So that that's yeah, we're making fun of, you know, the the snorting. Yeah. Um but it was really just sad for the players cuz it's like we went on this great run. Didn't but at mean the anything. end it didn't matter. And no. so when he asked what conversations did you have? A lot of people, committee members, conference commissioners, obviously Commissioner Sankey had our had our 
our back the whole time and he supported us in all these conversations under trying to understand why not one person and buzz look buzz had his had his moment mm -hmm. right after we beat Alcorn mm -hmm. state and he's right there's not one person who can point to a piece of data that says absolutely definitive this is why and that's that's what you know gets you frustrated is just hey look if you kind of know the ground rules right. like okay hey we didn't make it hey if it was we lost eight games in a row well just say that but the other side of it is they say well it's the total body of work mm -hmm. so it shouldn't matter when you lost those eight games yeah did we lose the eight games yeah we did that's a fact and we never shied yeah, from that that's a fact but we finished nine and nine we finished in fifth place in the sec we beat Auburn and Arkansas down the stretch. We beat Alabama. We on the won road. seven like, in a row. <laughs> so yeah. So <laughs> that, that lost. So yeah. if we get dinged for eight, you should get credit, right. you know, right. for those seven. So um, that's basically what we've learned is that there's no clear pathway. There's all kinds of data that gets mixed in the pot, and at the end of the day, there's 12 individuals on that committee, and it's 12 votes. And so I, I think we need we need more transparency on the timeline mm -hmm. of when they start having these conversations about who's in and kind of who's out, because if conference tournaments don't matter, then let's either move up our conference tournament or let's not have conference tournaments. Right. But no one can really answer answer that question. So um, this conversation, from our perspective, will will not go away, um, even though it's sort of the off season. We're going to keep pressing what we can learn from this and how maybe there can be some changes. Maybe maybe we shouldn't be slotting teams in February when we announce, hey, here's the top 16 teams. Well, what does that do? That creates bias. Yeah. Creates mm -hmm. bias. It's just human nature. It creates bias in the media. Creates bias in the selection room. Like everybody should have a clear slate until the very end. Mm -hmm. And so that that's the part that uh, that we're learning about and – and uh, we think there should be more transparency. So. I can't thank the Aggies who showed up in New York City oh, enough. That that so it fun. turned into yeah. a positive, yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. it, Ross? Yeah, we ha I guess we haven't, it. we haven't really talked since then. Um, but here here's what cemented the run we had for me: Quentin Jackson, <laughs> New York City on the podium, and this was after we won on Tuesday night. He said that yeah, we wanted to make the NCAA tournament. Of course, that's the dream. I came back for my extra year you know, to, to build this program. But if you would tell me that my last two games of my college career are in Madison Square Garden, that's a dream come true. And it's like, okay, that that right there. Now, of course, we wanted to win that game on Thursday night against Xavier. We, we didn't, right. came one point short. But for him to say that, okay, I think we can actually build a lot of momentum, and we already are, off of that run. So probably went longer no, <laughs> on that one. Than we wanted to, but it's uh, there's a lot of really cool stories for Q to be all SEC tournament yeah. and all NIT along with Boots, who had a heck of a look yeah. at the end right. of that one. That's right. You know what uh, is always a legacy for players, right? Also on that podium when he told Manny Obasiki, yeah. "I love this kid." Yeah, right. That's what he's going to leave now. He did all he could in his three years, yeah. and now yeah. that's what he's going to leave. That's yeah. I, yeah. that's what I'm excited about. No doubt, I so, really am. Yeah, upset, sad disappointed all the emotions Damn it. again a lot of again. conversations a lot of learning understanding we're pushing back we want to learn more we want to understand more and so it'll be an ongoing so that kind of ties into the next one yes it does oh yeah <laughs> a little bit well we thank mr miyagi for that <laughs> yeah. submittal yeah. so uh our guys waited long enough we'll get to him sutton turner aggie class of 93 from right here in college station and as always, let me get through his statement yeah. <laughs> before I get to your question that he submitted yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, Sutton references a Nicole Auerbach article in The Athletic uh, that made a case that projected revenue numbers for both the SEC and Big Ten will drastically separate from the other Power Five, Power Five conferences as early as 2025. These two conferences look to make twice as much in revenue compared to the ACC, Big 12, and Pac-12. If you couple this financial fact with what Coach Mike Krzyzewski said about the NCAA, and this is what Coach K said, the structure we have now does not work. 
this is the time to not look at nits and bits. It is time to look at the whole thing. So that's Coach K. Mm -hmm. And then, Ross, in your opinion, why would not the Big Ten and SEC form a super conference outside of the NCAA when the current system is broken and these two conferences are clearly separating from the rest of college athletics? Yeah. Lots to unpack there. Yeah. I think we're – are we doing okay on time? Um, this may not make the – He uh, looked at his watch. This yeah. may not make the segment of um, – the zone, right? The yeah. hour show. Yeah. Do we? Because we replay this on the zone. Oh no, right? yeah. we, we, we've got forty-two minutes tomorrow we've got, on uh, Studio Twelve. We've got time, so. and if not, so you got about seventeen yeah, to get this in. We're right? going to tell. <laughs> we're going to tell Louis he's playing your answer. Yeah, is what yeah, <laughs> we, won't, we won't go that long. Um, I'll try not to anyway. So a, a couple things. One, I don't believe all the numbers that were in that article are accurate. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen those numbers at that at that level. However. There, w there is a disparity that's happening now and will continue. I just I don't think the numbers that they were showing are, are quite accurate, um, especially at that really high end that they were showing for the SEC and the, and the Big Ten. So um, there, there's that piece of it. But somebody got that data. Somebody was doing some projections. Um, it is what it is. But there is a gap. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's no question. And then, you know, when the Big 12 gets reconstituted with their TV, what does that value look like? doesn't appear that they'll continue to get what they're getting now mm -hmm. with Texas and Oklahoma they're adding four new members so there there will be con uh, a continued uh, to uh, a, a gap there but I don't think it's quite as dramatic as maybe what they've seen um, we're gonna miss coach K I, I think that's that's clear we're gonna miss his voice we're gonna miss uh, his leadership I, I think he's one person that a lot of people look to to when he is critical or has some maybe constructive uh, criticism, if you will, people listen to him and, and they latch on. So I, I think uh, – I hope he continues around was, the game. He could almost be a consultant, couldn't he? I hope he continues around the game yeah. in, in, in some way, shape, or form. So I, I would agree with him that the structure we have now um, is broken. We have an identity problem. I, I think we have talked about that subject on here a, a little bit. I think we do need to figure out who we are, what's our model, what's our – What's our economic model between the student athlete and the institution? That, that's really at the crux of everything. And then I think his point about the model, the structure we have does not work. I think he's talking about, you know, divisions, which, which kind of gets into Sutton's question, which I'll address. So I do think we can make some headway in what's called the Transformation Committee is looking at a lot of these things. So it's, it's chaired by Greg Sankey, obviously the SEC commissioner and Julie, Julie Cromer, she's the AD at Ohio University. She actually has a great perspective. Uh, she used to work at Arkansas. She's worked at other Power Five programs. Now she's the AD at a group of five school. So I think the two of them are providing a great balance in leading what's called the Transformation Committee. There will be a lot of changes that come out of that group, mm -hmm. for sure. There's gonna be a lot of deregulation. There's gonna be a lot of, I think, common sense approaches to the things that we do in college athletics. And we're going to see some of those changes by August and by September. Hmm. Some of those things that they'll put forward will have to be voted on in January. That could take effect in 2023. But we'll, we'll see some changes in the next three to six months that are going to be, I think, uh, substantial mm -hmm. changes. Um, so I think we are looking at the whole thing. But there is going to be a limit, if you will, on what the transformation group can do because, as we've all said, we have state-by-state -state laws around NIL. We have Congress looking at federal guidelines around college athletics. So you could continue at a state-by-state -state level until Congress fixes things at a federal level. And so I do think there might be a limit on what the transformation committee can do because – of that, again, that question, the economics between the student athlete and the institution, that's really the crux of what the future is going to look like. So um, there will be changes. So as far as he says, in your opinion, why would not the Big Ten and SEC form a super conference outside of the NCAA? Again, it goes back to identity. If you did that, what would be the identity? Again, what, it, what would be the economic model between the student athlete and the, and the institution? What advantage would that give you? We have 16 teams. 
they have 14. That's 30 institutions. What does scheduling look like? What does rulemaking look like? What is governance? What is enforcement? Again, I, I don't know what advantages there would be at this point in time. So in my opinion, I don't think we're going down that path at this point in time. I don't think anyone has a, a, a magic plan that says, hey, look, here's the, here's the silver bullet answer that will solve everything. Um, it's going to be layered. It's going to be layered between this transformation committee, probably some state-by-state -state approaches for now, and then at some point some federal legislation. So I, d I don't see what the benefit is of a Big Ten SEC alliance, if, if you will. Um, the other thing that's that's out there, too, is the Big Ten has an alliance with the ACC yeah, and right. the Pac-12. Right. Mm -hmm. And none of us really are clear on, on what does that mean, what does that do, what does that mean logistically, what does that mean legislatively. We haven't really seen what that means. We have some games scheduled against ACC opponents and Pac-12 opponents. Will we continue to schedule those games? I don't know. We'd like to. We'd like to play them. But will they only schedule themselves? And so it's not as easy as saying, hey, these are the two richest conferences. They have all the money. Let's go off and do this because, one, there's already some things in place with the Big Ten. Two, I don't know what advantages we would gain by that. So in my opinion, I think we can solve a lot of things within the current structure, but you may have more delineation of – the top 65 institutions, the top 100 institutions. Those are the things I, th I think you might see out of this um, as we go into it. So mm -hmm. we have we have SEC meetings right. next week. Yeah, ADs uh, we meet um, in, in Florida next week. We'll have another set of SEC meetings at the end of May with presidents, faculty athletic reps, football, men's and women's basketball coaches, senior women's administrators, and athletic directors. Clearly, the topic of the NCAA, mm -hmm. transformation, the future, legislative aspects, all of those things are going to be continued to be talked about. Next week at our meeting, the end of May, we'll meet again in August. These things aren't going away um, anytime soon, and, and that's why we're here. You know, a lot – Sorry, I'm kind of – I'm not in 17 minutes yet. I think I'm at seven. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. You got 10 <laughs> you know, to go. A lot, I, a lot of my colleagues, um, they're, they're kind of seeing the challenges. And I'm looking at it like, hey, we, we, we actually get a seat at the table. Right. Whether you're Division three or Texas A&M, you can actually help shape the future of college athletics. If we embrace this, this moment, I do think we can change a lot of things and get a lot of things right. And so I'm, I'm one of the optimistic ones, and I think that's how we have to look at this is, look, we need an identity, and we all get it. So let's, let's figure it out. What is that identity? Let's do the right things for our student athletes. And, yeah, the model's changing. The economics are changing. There's a lot of money in the, in the system. Let's figure all this out because if done right, college athletics has a ton of value. All you have to do is go back – to last night's award show, just spend an hour and 15 minutes watching these athletes walk up on stage and go, okay, let's keep doing this. It's worth it because we get to support them. Mm -hmm. So I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm fired up about it, and I think we can, uh, we can get a lot of great things done. So Does it help, like you're saying, it's organic from the schools as opposed to top-down by an organization think, saying you yeah. have to do this, or now yeah. you want to say we want to do this, Andrew. I think uh, I don't. No one has seen all the details, but I, I think what you'll see from this transformation group is you, you you might see a lot of deregulation from the NCAA level, and say conferences. Gotcha. Here, you go ahead and put these parameters in place, put policies and procedures in place, and then conferences may say institutionally, then you can do what you want within these guidelines. You don't want to go all the way? Fine. It's kind of like the Alston money, the academic award money. We're giving out academic award money. Mm -hmm. We're choosing to do it next year. Some schools have chosen to do it this year. Mm -hmm. That's their prerogative. So I, I think you make a good point. I think you'll see deregulation maybe from the national level. That'll go conference mm -hmm. level 
which then could go institutionally. And people, programs can make their own choices mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating conversation, it and he, he laid it out well. And uh, we could go on and on about this subject. And uh, But uh, trust me, Sutton, it's not going away. <laughs> we'll come back in May and June and July and yeah, August. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, yeah. we, could, we could probably have the same conversation with maybe – with maybe a little more substance on what some of these updates are. Mm -hmm. And does it help you having the background at Ole Miss, at Missouri, at Miami, at UCLA, being at the different schools and now Texas A&M, you can bring what it was like at those yeah. schools because they want the identity as well as much as now you want this for Texas A&M. Yeah, I think so. And, and being the AD at Western Kentucky, mm -hmm. I, I think, again, the budget was $21 million. But yet we would go around and say – hey, we're a BCS – that was the BCS era. We're a BCS institution. Some of our uh, <laughs> basketball family mm -hmm. members, women's basketball. That's right. We would say – we would we would call <laughs> ourselves, hey, we're a BCS institution. We had access to the B BCS through the Sunbelt Conference. Mm -hmm. Were we ever going to play in that game? Probably not. <laughs> but we wanted to – right? Yeah. We wanted to say that right. we were. And so I can kind of bring that perspective sure. in – I've been on the men's basketball oversight committee. I mm -hmm. was on the transfer committee. I'm on the student athlete experience committee. So hopefully all of those things can help Commissioner Sankey, our league, our presidents formulate, hey, here's what we need to do. Yeah. Here, here's some ideas. It's a fascinating on to, time, isn't how it? how to move forward, yeah. Fascinating absolutely. time. So with all this going on, you're at SEC meetings next week. These kind of topics ongoing. You will have the news about facilities coming yep. this weekend. Yep. yep. We're going to move the May town hall up. This is the announcement that you're okay. going to want yeah, to write Okay, yeah, I need to write this okay. down. Yeah. Right now we are planned for May 5th with the next Aggie town hall. If something changes, okay. we will let you know. But I think Ross is putting it in his phone, too. I'm not sure he's no, probably I, already I, on there. I, I, if you have I, a date, that's probably already on there. I wrote right. it down. I was just checking to see if see, Sutton has a question. Yeah, Matt already. Simon puts it on the calendar. We all Then we all just get it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> when, <laughs> when will Sutton – Submit his question. That that's three thirty today. Probably, that's my over that's under the on Sutton. Sutton. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is fun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for all. Uh, April session is in the books, and again, right now we are scheduled for May fifth next town hall with Ross for Andrew. I'm Will. Thanks for joining us, everybody. So long from the south end zone of Kyle Field. <laughs>